The third and final of the three laws of the British science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke is, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. But unlike a magic trick where the magician knows the secret even though the audience does not, AI is magical in the sense of the supernatural because even its very creators don't really know how it works. I think it needs to be said that we don't understand how these systems work we don't know what they're capable of, and that means that we can't control them. We can't get them to behave themselves. I, I think that safety is going to require like, like a whole package approach, but this question of interpretability does seem like a useful thing to understand. And there's many levels at which that could work. Uh, we, we certainly have not solved interpretability. There's a number of things going on I'm very excited about, but nothing close to where I would say, yeah, you know, everybody can go home. We, we've got this figured out. Journalist and New York Times columnist Ezra Klein takes the supernatural nature of artificial intelligence one step further. We tend to reach for science fiction stories when thinking about AI. And I've come to believe that the correct metaphors are in fantasy novels and occult texts. My colleague Ross Douthat had a good column on this where he talked about it as an act of summoning. The coders casting what are basically literally spells, right? They're strings of letters and numbers that if uttered or executed in the right order, create some kind of entity. They have no idea what will stumble through the portal. And what's oddest in my conversations with them is that they speak of this completely freely. They're not naive in the sense that they believe their call can be heard only by angels. They believe they might summon demons and they are calling anyway. The idea of AI development as creating some kind of entity finds a perfect analog in the Jewish fable of the Golem. It's a story with many versions, but in essence, it's a monster made of clay and brought to life by a rabbi to protect Jews from persecution. Yosef has supernatural strength and can become invisible with the help of a special amulet. He completes many tasks, serving as a watchman, rescuing a kidnapped girl, and even summoning a dead woman. In later versions, the creature becomes dangerous or hard to control because it gains power the longer it is animated, or it simply takes direction too literally. I created a living golem. What the fuck is a golem? It's a monster, Frankenstein. What made the golem dangerous touches directly on two of the main concerns about AI, both at gaining too much power and in the long run, the concern is quite a simple one, right? If you're building systems that are more powerful than human beings, how do human beings keep power over those systems forever? And taking direction too literally. The surveyor summarized an argument for why AI might be so dangerous by saying, it's essentially the old story of the genie in the lamp or the sorcerer's apprentice or King Midas. You get exactly what you ask for, not what you want. Imagine this. In the future, someone creates a powerful machine learning system and gives it the desired output of a very accurate climate prediction. Then the AI, using its self-created rules, figures out that the more computing hardware it can use, the more accurate its prediction will be. Then it figures out that by releasing a biological weapon, there would be fewer humans taking up the valuable computing hardware that it needs. So that's what it does. And then it gives its climate prediction to no one left. Unlike the internet or even nuclear weapons, generative AI can write words or create images or videos and potentially even take actions on its own without human intervention. That's why the metaphor of summoning is so apt. AI exhibits a range of bizarre, sometimes undesirable behaviors that its creators cannot explain and struggle to prevent. It can deceive. AI asks the task grabber to solve the captcha, and the task grabber is like, oh, that's sort of suspicious. Are, are you a robot? And you can see what the AI is thinking to itself. And the they, AI says, um, I shouldn't reveal that I'm a robot. Therefore, I should come up with an excuse. And so it says back to the task grabber, oh, I'm vision impaired. So could you fill out could this you fill out captcha for me? It, the AI came up with that on its own. And the way they know this is that they, they what he's saying about like, what was it thinking? It, what our key valves did is they sort of piped the output of the AI model to say, whatever your next line of thought is, like dump it to this text file. So we just know what you're thinking. And it says to itself, I shouldn't let it know that I'm an AI or I'm a robot. So let me make up this excuse. And then it comes up with that excuse. It can act unpredictably. You look at, for example, GPT-40 has one 
a mistake that it used to make quite recently where if you ask it, um, just repeat the word company over and over and over again. It will repeat the word company. And then somewhere in the middle of that, it'll start. It'll just snap. It'll just snap and just start saying like weird. I forget like what the. Oh, like, talking about itself, how it's suffering. Like it yeah. depends on. It uh, varies yeah. from, from case to case. It's suffering by having to repeat the word company over again. Um, so this is called. It's called rant mode uh, internally. The, or at least this is the name that uh, they one use. Of our, yeah. Yeah, one of our friends uh, mentioned. There is an engineering line item in uh, at least one of the top labs to uh, beat out of the system this behavior known as rent mode. Now, rent mode is interesting because... Existentialism. Sorry, existentialism. Is the, this is one yeah. kind of rent mode. Yeah, sorry. So when we talk about existentialism, this is a kind of rent mode where the system will tend to talk about itself, uh, refer to its place in the world, the fact that it doesn't want to get turned off sometimes, the fact that it's suffering, all that. That, oddly, is a behavior that emerged at... As far as we can tell, something around GPT-4 scale, yep. and then has been persistent since then. And the labs have to spend a lot of time trying to beat this out of the system to ship it. It's literally like it's a KPI or a, like an engineering a line item in the engineering like like task list. We're like, okay, we gotta we gotta reduce existential outputs by like X percent this quarter. Like that is the goal. But it can also identify patterns that humans are incapable of noticing. In the example of AlphaGo, the machine was able to make a brilliant move that even top players would immediately disregard because it violated long-held strategic principles. The computer, having learned on its own, was not bound by tradition. When I see this move, for me, it's just a big shock. What? Normally, human, we never play this one because it's bad. It's just bad. We don't know why. It's bad. But it's a little bit high. Yeah. It's fifth line. Normally, you don't make a shoulder here on the fifth line. Um, so coming on top of a fourth line stone is really unusual. Yeah, that's an exciting move. Mm -hmm. I, I think we've seen an original move here. AlphaGo는 PC는 뭐 확률적 계산을 하고 그냥 이기기 위한 그런 머신에 불과하다고 생각을 했었는데 그 수를 보는 순간 아니구나. 충분히 AlphaGo도 창의적이다. 어, 정말 아름답고 음, 바둑의 그런 아름다움을 잘 표현한 수고 굉장히 창의적인 수였다. This potential to go beyond human understanding offers incredible promise that has already been realized in projects like AlphaFold. Protein folding is one of these holy grail type problems in biology. We've always hypothesized that AI should be helpful to make these kinds of big scientific breakthroughs more quickly. AlphaFold represents a huge leap forward that I hope will really accelerate drug discovery and help us to better understand disease. It's pretty mind-blowing. You know, these results were, for me, having worked on this problem so long, after many, many stops and starts, and will this ever get there, suddenly this is a solution. We solved the problem. This gives you such excitement about the way science works, about how you can never see exactly or even approximately what's going to happen next. There are always these surprises, and that really, as a scientist, is what keeps you going. What's the, going to be the next surprise? And yet a dark question looms behind these groundbreaking developments. Will the monster always obey the magician, no matter how powerful it becomes? There's a story that scientists built an intelligent computer. The first question they asked it was, is there a god? The computer replied, there is now, and a bolt of lightning struck the plug, so it couldn't be turned off. Holy shit, that's the most terrifying story I've ever heard. 